Okay, this question has to do with stress relaxation. Stress relaxation is a phenomenon in material science where you apply a stress to something by straining it, but something happens internally to the material that mitigates that stress, it reduces it. In the case of polymers, that's easy to imagine. These are long chains of molecules that get tangled up together. But imagine, as you apply the stress over a while, these chains might to untangle and start to slide past one another. If they are able to do that, even though the strain is staying constant, the stress is actually reduced in your material. So it's important to understand how the stress relaxation occurs and how we can model it and what sort of equations are out there. That's what this question is going to tackle. So the question says, a stress of 7.6 megapascals is applied to a polymer under constant strain. After 40 days at 20 degrees Celsius, the stress is now decreased to only 4.8 megapascals. Furthermore, it tells us when the same polymer is heated to 40 degrees Celsius, the relaxation time is 50 days. So part A asks, what is the relaxin relaxation time constant for this material at 20 degrees Celsius? Then asks, what will be the stress after 60 days at 20 degrees Celsius? And finally, it asks, calculate the stress relaxation activation energy for this polymer. Okay, let's start with part A. Part A, it's going to ask us to determine the relaxation time constant. So let's start with our equation. The stress is equal to the initial stress multiplied by the exponential of negative time held at that stress divided by a relaxation time constant. So we have the initial stress, 7.6 megapascals. We have the stress after 40 days, 4.8 megapascals, and we know that it took 40 days to get there. So we can go ahead and plug in for t, sigma, and sigma naught, and solve for tau. Let's go ahead and do so. So sigma over sigma naught, that's going to be equal to 4.8 over 7.6. The megapascals cancel out. That's going to be equal to the exponential of negative 40 days, let me just write d, over tau. If we take the natural log of both sides of this, that allows us to get rid of the exponential. So we have natural log of 0 0.6315 on the left hand side of our equation is equal to negative 40 days over tau. Rearranging and putting tau on the left hand side of the equation and dividing both sides by natural log of 0 0.6315, uh, we have that tau is equal to negative 40 days divided by, punching in the, the value for that, that's equal to negative 0 0.4595, which is equal to 87.04 days. So at 20 degrees Celsius, that is our time constant, relaxation time constant for this material. Meaning, what does the relaxation time constant even mean? It means that after this number of days, 87 days, the stress will be reduced by 1 divided by e, the natural number, or about 37%. So we're going to have about 37% of what our initial stress was. Okay. Now that depends on the temperature, so that's going to be a different number for 40 degrees Celsius as we see in the question it says that that value is only 50 degrees if you heat this polymer up. We're going to come back to that. So part B says, what will the stress be after 60 days at 20 degrees Celsius? So now we simply have to use the time constant that we just determined and we're going to solve for a new sigma. So sigma now at 60 days, we're going to have the same initial applied stress, sigma naught. It's going to be multiplied by the exponential of 60 days now, divided by our time constant at this temperature, which we just solved for, 87.04 days. The days cancel out. All we need to do is plug in those values. We know that the initial value was 7.6 megapascals. So we can solve for the value. Let's plug these things in. We end up with 7.6 megapascals multiplied by 0 0.5019 which is equal to 3.8 megapascals. So that's part B. After 60 days our stress is reduced all the way down to 3.8 megapascals. Now what about part C? It says calculate the stress relaxation activation energy for this polymer. So now we need a new equation. We need to relate the stress relaxation time to an activation energy. We can do that. 1 divided by tau, our relaxation time constant, is going to be equal to a pre-exponential constant. Let's just call it c. 
multiplied by the exponential of an activation energy, negative Q for stress relaxation, divided by thermal energy, R times T, the gas constant times the temperature at. Make sure that's in Kelvin. So um, if we tried to solve this, we have two different temperatures where we know this um, time constant, right? And we know what temperatures those occur with, but we have two unknowns in this equation. We have both C and Q. Therefore, to solve this equation, we're going to need to write two equations since we have two unknowns. But we can do that. We know the time constant at two different temperatures. So let's go ahead and write out two equations with two unknowns, divide them by each other so that the C goes away, and then solve for Q. So we have 1 divided by 87.04 equals C times the exponential of negative Q over 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by 293 Kelvin. In the other hand, we have 1 divided by um, 50 equals C times the exponential of negative Q over 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by 40 plus 273 which is 313. If we divide these two equations by one another, then the C's cancel out. That's what allows us to solve for the Q now. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. 50 divided by 87.04 equals the exponential of negative Q over R divided by 1 over 293 minus 1 over 313. If we take the natural log of both sides, that allows us to get rid of the exponential. We go ahead and figure out what the natural log of 50 over 87.04 is, and we find that it is equal to negative 0 0.5543, which we can multiply by the gas constant, and then we divide this all by 1 over 293 Kelvin minus 1 over 313 Kelvin. Make this all negative to get rid of the negative Q, and that equals Q. Let's punch those values in. And I come up with a value of 21,132. So 21,132, that would be in joules per mole. Or if we turn that into kilojoules, that's equal to 21, you know, roughly 0.1 kilojoules per mole as our activation energy for stress relaxation in this polymer system.